Hi, I'm Pooh Sprague. My family and I own Edgewater Farm in Plainfield, New Hampshire. It's my daughter, Sarah, over there, son, Raymond, and my wife, Ann. Edgewater Farm is about 270 acres, 70 of it tillable, and we're in a diverse mix of small fruit, vegetables, and greenhouse crops. <laughs> Pretty much everything that we grow on the farm is marketed through our two uh, farm stands. Our basic philosophy is that because we have such sandy soils here, and we're using them so intensively that we just feel that cover crops are an important component in soil amendment and uh, yeah just basically maintaining a healthier soil the fawn on the soil rather than going in and clean cultivating massive areas there's a lot of wasted space so we cover crop whenever we possibly can We use a summer smother when we have uh, finished up a short-term crop like uh, peas in particular. If we're not going back with something immediately, we'll use a summer smother to suppress weeds and add some organic matter. Buckwheat is probably the simplest summer smother for us to manage. It's very quick. We seed it anywhere. I think the recommended rate is a bushel per acre, but I'm sure that we glom on pretty close to two or even more sometimes. It's very quick, it's very easy to work down. We have a set of uh, fairly heavy harrows and we can go in right now in short order and uh, incorporate this with a set of harrows as well as put on a winter cover crop at the same time. So it's very easy to manage in terms of the machinery that we own. we have here is a crop of Japanese millet on a piece of fairly heavy ground that we're not using this year so we're using a longer season uh, cover crop here to build uh, organic matter in the soil. The ground was well prepared when we got onto this. We broadcast about uh, three bushels the acre which is very very heavy as you can see um, but we figure if you're going to grow a crop and the fertility is there you might as well put it on heavy, with our, especially with cover crops. I like the Japanese millet over the Sudan as it's a little easier to incorporate. If the Sudan and Sudax get ahead of you, which they sometimes can when you're picking vegetables late in the summer, it can get quite woody and it's very hard to incorporate uh, in the fall. It's now about the 15th of August. Hopefully in another week we'll get someone down here with a heavy set of harrows and we'll harrow this up. Uh, probably once over, we'll chop it up and expose a little of the dirt. We'll come in and broadcast either peas and oats on top of that or hairy vetch and winter rye and disc it in lightly and that'll give us a winter cover crop. This is a system we've been using for about 10 years on our very sandy soils. Uh, certain crops, like the tomatoes, melons, summer squash, uh, vine crops, we've interseeded between the rows of the crop, we put in strips of clover. This does two things for us. One, we feel we're getting some benefit uh, to the soil by cover cropping uh, and not clean cultivating. And second of all, it just makes a nice work environment, as you can see, for the workers to pick. It gives us some cultural benefits in terms of the plants. Instead of cr crowding them, they've got, you know, 10 feet. That makes it easier to spray. It makes so that they get better air drainage. We use white clover in this system as opposed to grasses. On sandy soil, we found that white clover establishes itself. It tillers out, makes a nice, real nice mat by the fall. We manage it by seeding it early in April. We seed it with a brilliant seeder after the bed's been prepared for both the laying of plastic. We'll come through after the plastic's down, the drip tape's down, and we'll seed the clover and lawn before we come in and transplant the, the crop. Uh, it needs the early spring moisture to get established. And then we'll mow it several times, usually when it gets about six to eight inches high with the weeds or when it gets to be a nuisance or the help will let me know if it needs to be mowed. It'll usually come up to broad leaves and all manner of weeds and we mow the weeds off several times. That usually suppresses 
all the broad leaves. And sometimes we'll have an issue in June with crabgrass, and we may come in with post or some uh, post-emergent grass herbicide. This particular cover crop has not been sprayed with anything. We've just managed it by mowing. White clover is probably the most expensive uh, cover we could put down, but because of its height, because it establishes well for us, and because it is a legume, we think that it's probably well worth it.